Welcome to the shooting show. This week it's an Irish fox and extravaganza as Jason Doyle heads out three times in two days to bring Charlie to book. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Jason Doyle is on a mission. He might be a renowned seeker guide, but today he has smaller quarry in mind. So I'm out this evening after a particularly troublesome fox we have. It's a small farm here, about 20 acres. It joins some hill that I help with the grouse regeneration project. And I don't need to tell you how bad it is to have a, a fox on your grouse moor. He's taken chickens today. During the middle of the day, the farmer rung me and said that the fox had come into the yard and he'd taken a chicken and we have a shed over on our left where they're lambing at the moment so they're particularly worried that they have a mature fox around who's been very cheeky and coming around during the day because these lambs will be going out on the fields now in three or four days they have horses and donkeys on the farm so they're not keen on us coming around at night time with the lamp so it's just about 40 minutes before dark now we're going to have a sit and see if we can see him coming in off the hill. This evening I have my little Browning X-Bolt stainless stalker with me, 6.5 by 55, normal 120 grain ballistic tip bullets. Really good bullets for foxes, fast and flat, and they do a good job when they get there. And on top I have the Swarovski Z6, 1.7 to 10 by 42. Nice low profile scope for this rifle. We'll give it a few minutes here, and maybe then give a call. A few minutes is all we need as a big fox shows itself. There he is, running up the field. It's all going to plan. Until now. Well, that's one of those times where it, it hasn't worked as I'd hoped. Silly, silly miss. Um, miscalculated the range a little bit, to be honest. He's, he was maybe 200 yards. I think now maybe the best option will come back. I'll come back in the morning. Maybe leave it for two days and come back first thing in the morning and see will he be moving. I doubt now we'll get him moving again at this time. He looked like a big mature fox. They don't get to be that old by being stupid. Jason just can't wait two days though, and is out with shooting buddy Stephen the next night. So we've come up tonight to the farm where I missed the fox yesterday. Um, when I went and I told the farmer what had happened, he was so keen for us to get the fox that he volunteered to take in all the stock. Um, the only thing he was really worried about were the, were the horses, the donkeys and things like that. He said should be fine with us lamping. So we're going to have a quick look round. Um, there's four or five fields here. We'll have a quick look round and see if we can catch up with this fox that we missed yesterday. Hopefully he'll be back around and hopefully we'll be able to get him. The first call of the night gives us a chance, but again, it's not to be. We just walked out 40 yards and put the lamp up again and here the fox was no more than 50 yards from us, downwind of us and um, unfortunately he didn't give us a second, he ran off. Um, he stopped for a fraction just before he got to the hedge and I just wasn't quite on him enough to pull the trigger. Looked like a big dog fox, could possibly be the same lad we missed yesterday. 
uh, it would make sense. He, he's coming back to the same area. Um, just unfortunate now he got the, the wrong side of the wind, but the education we gave him yesterday has only been improved now by that episode. But I think we'll go back to our original plan and come back here in the morning. We convinced Jason to give it one more go for the cameras, and it turns out to be worth it. We were calling from the top of the hill, and we could see eyes three, four hundred yards below us across the river. So the fox was walking up and down the bank of the river, obviously not too keen to cross it. So we just steadily walked down in towards him, got into about 150, 160 yards, I think. And he was just sitting in a hedge at the far side of the river and just managed to get a nice shot on him. He was facing his full frontal. So I think the bullet has gone just low into the chest from the reaction and from the sound of the shot. There's a chance we won't be able to cross this river, but if there's any way we can get the carcass, we will. I suppose it would be the done thing to to go and pick up the carcass. Stephen, do you want to go get it? Oh! Oh, that's cold. Two very wet and cold feet. Worth it. You get that result. We've probably got half a mile to walk back to the car, so I expect to have raw feet by then, and the wellies will definitely be noisy now. A good result, but we still need to get that troublesome fox. So after Jason's had time to dry his boots, he's back. I'm heading out for my third attempt to get this fox. We did get a fox in the end last night, but not the one I was after. Um, had him come in on the lamp, didn't get him. The farmer had taken in the horses, so we were okay to lamp. I really should have had him last night, just I wasn't quite on him when he stopped. He'd came in downwind of us, so he had our wind and just didn't stop when he went out. I've admitted defeat at this stage, and I'm going to hand the rifle over to Stephen, let him do the shooting. I'm going to be behind the camera this morning. Hopefully Stephen will be able to rectify the situation. Stephen embarks on his mission to prove that he's the real talent of the outfit. The first part of call is to check likely locations around the farmyard, but a quick glassing session gives no early results. We'll make our way back down to the corner of the yard. We don't have the wind in our favour, but we'll try a call just in case. He, he's laying up at the back of a ditch here somewhere, but we'll, we'll try it anyway. Had a bit of a call, nothing showed, and then headed up to a field where, where there's some ewes out who are waiting to lamb. They seemed agitated, so we had a, had a look at the field there, there was nothing, and we just went to the next field, the very next field beside them, and just climbing over the gate actually we could see this guy mooching along in a bit of dead ground, so we had a quick walk in. The walk and stalk tactic appears to be paying dividends as we quickly make up the distance on our chosen fox. Charlie is keeping out of sight in some dead ground, but at the crucial moment he breaks cover, giving Stephen just a few seconds to get ready for a shot. Stephen was up on the sticks and he never knew we were there. We were really lucky. Luckily, Stephen managed to pull it out of the bag for us this time. I'm pretty confident that this is the guy we've been after. He was in the same area. It was actually the same field. We'd had him come in under the, under the lamp last night. So I'm hoping this is the same fella. Stephen managed a nice, nice shot just behind the shoulder. 
he spun around for a second or two and then he was down. But good sized dog fox. Um, hopefully he's the one that's been taking the farmer's chickens and he definitely won't take any more. So the credit goes to Stephen this time. I should have had him a couple of times, but at least now we have him in the bag. Job done. Finally, some foxing joy for Stephen and Jason there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. There's a new initiative aimed at getting people to try field sports for the first time. The Experience campaign was launched last week and will be heavily promoted in the press over the coming weeks. It all comes to a head at the UK Game Fair this July, where a series of experience events will encourage people to try air gunning, clay shooting, fishing, gun dogs and 4x4s. More details online at ukgamefair.com. British shooting has a new hope for the future. It's Ben Llewellyn. The 22-year-old skeet shooter upset the odds at the ISSF World Cup in Cyprus, winning the silver medal at his first ever World Cup stage. He took eventual gold medalist Mikola Milchev all the way to a shoot-off after they tied in the final. The Welsh youngster said he was over the moon. Read the full report in Clay Shooting Magazine out next week. Spring woodcock migration has begun, according to the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust. Five of the woodcock it tracks have begun their migrations. Starting in a range of locations across England and Ireland, they can now be found in France, the Netherlands, Germany, Poland and Sweden. The GWCT said their departure came as no surprise, with low wind speeds providing the calm conditions that are perfect for takeoff. You can track the woodcock now on the GWCT website. Now is your last chance to have your say on hunting with dogs in Scotland. The review of legislation stops taking written evidence at the end of March, so make sure you've made your views known by Wednesday. Field sports organisations have urged anyone involved in fox control to get involved. You can contribute to the review by following the link on screen now. And finally, you can now map your shoot and keep bag records using your phone. Basque has revamped its Green Shoots program to work on smartphones and tablets. This means you can map your shoot or record wildlife sightings and what goes in the game bag while you're still out in the field. The data you provide goes towards Basque research on the benefits of shooting. Basque's Ian Danby said the new data could be critical to enabling the wider conservation world to better understand where species currently are. If you run a shoot, don't miss iShoot magazine every month. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>